Chapter 38 of the Diabetes Canada 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines is on type 2 diabetes and Indigenous peoples. My name is Alice Chang and I'm narrating this deck on behalf of the authors Lyndon Croshu, David Dannenbaum, Michael Green, Rita Henderson, Mariam Nakshbandi Hayward, and Ellen Toth. Key changes from this chapter include the fact that the chapter was written with significant Indigenous input. There is new information in the chapter on the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and its call to action related to Indigenous health care. There is also an E4E, Education for Equality Framework, for assisting healthcare providers in addressing social and cultural domains in the clinical interactions with Indigenous people with diabetes. There is also a focus on solutions to Indigenous specific barriers to reaching management targets. Please note that in this chapter, the terms Aboriginal and Indigenous are generally used interchangeably. Indigenous peoples is the term accepted by the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and is in increasing usage today. In the Canadian context, there are three Aboriginal groups recognized by the Constitution, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. It is important to recognize that while many Aboriginal people live in their original land-based communities, which are mostly rural or remote, as many as 50% live in cities and towns and may or may not choose to self-identify. Furthermore, wherever they live, Indigenous peoples' customs can vary greatly according to band or group affiliation religion, education, or a variety of other factors. Key messages from this chapter include, Indigenous peoples living in Canada are among the highest risk populations for diabetes and related complications. Screening for diabetes should be carried out earlier and at more frequent intervals. Effective prevention strategies are essential and should be grounded in the specific social, cultural, and health service contexts of the community. Pre-diabetes is an important opportunity to prevent or delay diabetes with healthy behavior interventions or metformin. Other key messages include, particular attention is needed for Indigenous women and girls of childbearing age as the high incidence of hyperglycemia in, in pregnancy, gestational and type 2, as well as the high incidence of maternal obesity increases the risk of childhood obesity and diabetes in the next generation. Early identifi identification of diabetes in pregnancy is important, and postpartum follow-up is essential for all women with diabetes or gestational diabetes. Diabetes management targets in Indigenous peoples should be no different from general population. A focus on building a therapeutic relationship with an Indigenous person with diabetes is important, rather than a singular emphasis on achieving management targets. The current poor success at achieving management targets highlights the limitation of health services when they are not relevant to the social and cultural context of Indigenous peoples. A purposeful process of learning and continuous self-reflection is required by the healthcare worker to understand their own ongoing biases and then integrate Indigenous specific contexts within the clinical approach to diabetes management. Some practical tips for the healthcare providers. Acknowledge the legacy of colonization and its ongoing adverse effects on Indigenous health. This legacy maintains socioeconomic disadvantage that limits healthy choices. This includes diet, physical activity, and adherence to medication, etc. Increases levels of stress and decreases capacity for self care and healthy behavior change. This legacy perpetuates a toxic social environment for the individual, family, and community with pervasive and accumulated psychosocial ad adversities throughout the life's course. This legacy stirs experiences of shame and stigma with a diagnosis of diabetes and may recall residential school-like conditions with healthcare provider expectations that Indigenous people with diabetes will acquire diabetes knowledge and produce test results. <laughs>
Healthcare providers during clinical interactions need to recognize, explore, and acknowledge the following. Discord within the therapeutic relationship that may arise from heightened apprehension by the indigenous person with diabetes, as well as emotional reaction to prejudice, power, and authority asserted by healthcare providers. We must also recognize, explore, and acknowledge interconnectedness between socioeconomic disadvantage, adverse life experiences, and capacity for managing diabetes. We also need to recognize, explore, and acknowledge one's own concepts of health, diabetes care, and assumptions about Indigenous perspectives, as well as the Indigenous person's preferences and barriers for reconnecting and integrating cultural resources and traditional approaches to care. Healthcare providers should engage and connect broadly with the Indigenous community in order to implement prevention efforts and screening with special attention to children and pregestational women, as well as the building of culturally sensitive interprofessional teams, diabetes registries, and surveillance systems. We should also connect broadly with the Indigenous community to foster positive relationships at the individual, family, and community levels that advocate for family and community resources for Indigenous peoples. And we should also include traditional and cultural leadership to learn about local beliefs, practices, and healing resources. When thinking about educating for equity, which is the framework that we want to be using when addressing the Indigenous communities, there are strategies for addressing the social barriers to improve diabetes outcomes. These strategies include addressing barriers such as social and economic resource disparities, accumulation of adverse life experiences, as well as colonization inequality in healthcare. When thinking about addressing social and economic resource disparities, screen for and explore resource limitations that influence diabetes onset and management. Acknowledge with the patient the impact of resource limitations on diabetes onset and management, and support access to key proximal health determinants as well as assess diabetes knowledge and health literacy. When trying to address the accumulation of adverse life experiences, acknowledge with the patient connections between adverse life experiences and their capacity for diabetes management. In addition, explore the patient's perspectives on personal adverse experiences in the context of diabetes in order to address their own priorities. When addressing the barrier of colonization, inequality, and healthcare, critically reflect on one's own stereotypes, assumptions, and biases. Identify and explore moments of discord, paying particular attention to patient resistance, hesitation, and withdrawal. Negotiate an agreeable power balance and refrain from an authoritarian approach that relies on language rooted in oppression and racism. There are also strategies for facilitating outcomes using a cultural approach, remembering that culture is therapeutic, culture informs relationships, and culture frames knowledge. We should strive for cultural congruency of management recommendations, explore patients' preferences and support choices for accessing cultural resources, and engage with the community to learn of local beliefs and practices and healing resources. Culture also informs relationships, so therefore reflect on professional distance and objectivity, and in the spirit of reciprocity, consider sharing about yourself to build trust. Adjust your pace when exploring the patient's world, and connect and work to foster positive relationships at the individual, family, and community levels. Culture also frames knowledge. So critically reflect on your own concepts of health and diabetes care and potential assumptions of Indigenous perspectives. Build a shared understanding of diabetes that integrates and contextualizes biomedical, social, political, and cultural explanatory frameworks. And use language appropriate for the patient's educational and cultural background. And consider metaphors within a narrative approach. Recommendation one for this chapter. Management of prediabetes and diabetes in Indigenous people 
should follow the same clinical practice guidelines as those for the general population with respect for and sensitivity to particular social, historical, economic, cultural, and geographic issues as they relate to diabetes care and education. Recommendation two, starting in early childhood, Indigenous people should be evaluated for modifiable risk factors of diabetes, such as obesity, inactivity, and unhealthy diet. They should also be evaluated for modifiable risk factors of prediabetes or metabolic syndrome. Recommendation three, screening for diabetes in Indigenous populations should follow guidelines for high-risk populations. For example, younger screening, including children, and at more frequent intervals, depending on the presence of additional risk factors. Recommendation four, to promote access to screening for remote indigenous populations, access to standard laboratory testing is recommended. In its absence, point of care testing for A1C may be considered where testing is associated with a quality control program and interpretation and follow-up expertise is available. Recommendation five, retinal photography screening programs may be used in indigenous people living in remote areas to promote access to screening. Recommendation six, attainment of a healthy body weight prior to conception should be promoted among indigenous women to reduce their risk of gestational diabetes. Nutrition counseling should be provided on healthy eating and prevention of excessive weight gain in early pregnancy ideally before 15 weeks of gestation, to reduce the risk of gestational diabetes. Recommendation seven, indigenous women identified as being at risk for type two diabetes, planning a pregnancy, should be screened for diabetes using fasting plasma glucose and or A1C. If identified as having diabetes, receive preconception counseling that includes optimal diabetes management including nutrition and physical activity advice, preferably in consultation with an interprofessional pregnancy team to optimize maternal and neonatal outcomes. Number eight, pregnant indigenous women identified as being at risk for type two diabetes should be offered screening with an A1C test at the first antenatal visit if not screened preconception. Pregnant indigenous women with diabetes should also receive management following the same clinical practice guidelines as those for the general population to improve pregnancy outcomes. Recommendation 10. In the postpartum period, indigenous women with pre-existing or gestational diabetes should be encouraged to breastfeed immediately to reduce the risk of neonatal hypoglycemia. The infant of a pregnant Indigenous woman with diabetes should receive close monitoring for neonatal hypoglycemia with capillary blood glucose monitoring for up to 36 hours. In addition, Indigenous women with gestational diabetes should be screened with a 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test between six weeks and six months postpartum to detect prediabetes and diabetes and regularly thereafter according to recommendations in screening for diabetes. Recommendation 11, Indigenous communities should be supported in initiating and maintaining culturally appropriate primary prevention programs for children and adults to assess and mitigate risk factors such as geographic and cultural barriers, food insecurity, psychological stress, insufficient infrastructure, and settings that are not conducive to physical activity. Key messages about diabetes for Indigenous peoples and their communities. Many Indigenous communities have families with high rates and high risk of type 2 diabetes. If you are in a community with high rates of diabetes, see a healthcare provider to learn about ways to be tested or prevent diabetes. The causes of diabetes are complex. Learning about the medical, social, and cultural contributions to diabetes is key to diabetes prevention. In particular, seek to understand the relationships between the history of colonization and the current high rates of diabetes in Indigenous peoples. Ask about community initiatives that promote healthy behavior such as diabetes walks, weight loss groups, 
fitness classes, community kitchens and gardens, and activities for children and teenagers in schools. If you are planning a pregnancy or may get pregnant, get screened for diabetes. If you are pregnant and have diabetes or have been diagnosed with gestational diabetes, visit your healthcare providers more often and find out about exercise, breastfeeding, and other support groups for pregnant women and new mothers. For more information on this chapter and others, please visit guidelines.diabetes.ca or download the app from Android, Google Play, or from the App Store. Thank you very much for your attention.